react. With the fourth pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select Kristaps Porzingis from Leopaya, Latvia. He last played for Sevilla in Spain. Yes guys, this is the exact reason I wanted to make this video. On January 31st, 2019, the Knicks traded away Chris Thompson Porzingis, Courtney Lee, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Trey Burke for Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan and Wesley Matthews, the two guys that got released and two for future first rounders. This deal is the inspiration for this video. I would like you I would like to welcome you to how to run an NBA organization with the New York Knicks and James Dolan. So for our first bad contract, in 2001, James Dolan offered their 30-year-old vet Allen Houston a 6-year $100 million max contract. Keep in mind that this is really really fucking big in 2001. Allen Houston retired due to injuries 4 years into the contract and 40 million left on his contract. And the Knicks had to own 40 million. Well, that fucking sucks for the Knicks. Summer of 1997, a 34-year-old Patrick Ewing got a payday by receiving a four-year $60 million deal. By this time, Patrick Ewing was at his decline stage and wasn't good as he was before. But he deserved it since he was an elite player and a franchise player for the Knicks that was the key to the Knicks playoff runs in the early to mid-90s. This is a rare occasion. Larry Brown, former NBA champ as the coach of the Pistons in 2004, was signed with the Knicks in the summer of 2005 to a five-year $50 million deal. After one season, Larry Brown got fired and the Knicks were forced to pay out his, his contract. Like fucking idiots again. First bad free agent signing that the Knicks made. In the summer of 2005, the Knicks signed former center Jerome James to a five-year $30 million deal. This might not sound like much in 2019, but trust me, it was a lot in 2006. The most notable time that he did as a Nick was going to his local McDonald's and rupturing his Achilles tendon. And might I mention that he only played four games in his final three years of his contract. Spaghetti, they love my spaghetti. Three cheese, two meat spaghetti. I make a main steak, very tender, very soft, you know, with the asparagus and potatoes. Three cheese, two meat spaghetti. Summer of 2016, the Knicks signed Joe Kim Noah to a four year, $72 million deal, meaning that he'll get $18 million a year. It's safe to say they didn't pan out, and he was a shadow of his former self. He only played 53 games with the Knicks, even having a stint with the Westchester Knicks until he got waived in October 2018 and recently signed by the Memphis Grizzlies. In summer of 2016, Courtney Lee signed a four-year, $48 million contract with the Knicks. Courtney Lee is a good three-point shooter, but definitely not worth $12 million. Usually right now in the league, good 3 and D players are overpaid. He was a good player with the Knicks and he had a good run with the Knicks until he got a straight neck and then was traded, as mentioned before, to the Dallas Mavericks. We are back to the summer of 2005 where the Knicks gave Eddie Curry a 6 year $60 million deal. He struggled with weight issues and heart issues and basically had the same problems like Jabroni, Jerome James. He fell out of rotation when Mike D'Antoni came. He only played 10 games in his final three years of his contract, similar to Jerome James, as mentioned before. In 2010, Amari Stoudemire signed a five-year, $100 million contract with the New York Knicks. To be fair to him, his first two years with the Knicks were really good. Then the injuries came around, and he wasn't explosive as he was with the Phoenix Suns back in the early 2000s. Paying $20 million a year to an injury-prone player 
had no financial flexibility, and there was too much dysfunction in the club, and so he couldn't do well with them anyways. Jerry Jeffries signed a five-year, $30 million contract. I see that there's a trend here. Waste of $6 million on average scrubs. He got traded to the Rockets next year. And that's it. No one cares about him. Our first bad draft pick that the Knicks made. In 1999, they drafted French center Frederick Weiss with the 15th overall pick in the 1999 NBA draft. I don't have much info on him except that he never played with the Knicks. So basically, the Knicks could have drafted Ron Artest, Andre Kirilenko, and Manu Ginobili instead of him. 2003, the New York Knicks selected Michael Sweetney 9th overall in the 2003 NBA draft. Sweetney was always known for being a bit overweight and only spent two seasons with the Knicks. And he didn't do anything. The Knicks could have got David West, Boris Dia, Leandro Barbosa, Josh Howard, Mo Williams, Kyle Corbett, and even Jose Calderon that went undrafted in the 2003 NBA draft. Manning Fry is the next person on this list, as he was selected 8th overall in the 2005 NBA Draft. Nowadays, Fry is known to be a nice 3-point shooter. He spent 2 seasons with the Knicks until he got traded for Zach Randolph. And his best Knicks season, Fry averaged 13 points per game and 6 rebounds per game, but regressed the next season, averaging 10 points per game and 6 rebounds per game, shooting 17% from 3, and he's known to be a 3-point shooter. The Knicks could have selected Andrew Bynum, Danny Granger, Lou Williams, and Marcin Gortat over Channing Fry. Six, the Knicks selected Ronaldo Balkman with the 20th pick in the 2006 NBA Draft. He was a bad player in general, averaging 15 minutes per game and having 5 points per game, 19% from the 3-point line, and 57% from the free throw line. In his second season, all of his stats declined, even having 8% from the three-point line. 8%! Leading to him get training to Denver. A pick later, Rajon Rondo was selected by the Suns and then got traded to Boston. Another specific names that the Knicks could have got are Kyle Lowry, P.J. Tucker, and Paul Millsap. And the thing that makes this worse is that he wasn't even included in the top 300 players eligible to be drafted. So this guy was basically a fucking dumpster. In 2008, Danilo Gallinari was selected with the 6th pick in the 2008 NBA Draft. Danilo Gallinari was always a decent player, but not worth a 6th overall pick. Gallinari always struggled with injuries and eventually was part of the deal that sent Melo to the Knicks. The Knicks could have gotten selected talents such as Brook Lopez, Roy Hibbert before he became into shit, Serge Ibaka, DeAndre Jordan, and Goran Dragic. 2009, the Knicks selected Jordan Hill with the 8th pick in the 2009 NBA Draft. He was a power forward that came out from Arizona, and he was supposed to be a top 5 pick, but that didn't work out, luckily for the other teams. The Knicks traded Jordan Hill in his rookie season for an old crippled Tracy McGrady. Eventually, Jordan Hill never became good, and the Knicks missed out on DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, Jeff Teague, Joe Ingles, Wesley Matthews, and Danny Green. bad trade section. Our first trade happened in 2002 where the Knicks traded Marcus Camby, Mark Jackson and the 7th overall pick in the 2002 NBA draft which later became Nene or Nene Hilario who is currently on the Houston Rockets for Antonio McDice. Camby and Nene became key pieces for Denver in the early 2000s while McDice was injured in the 2002 preseason and played 18 games for the Knicks until leaving to go to other teams such as the Pistons and the Spurs where he was actually a key player. On July 10th, 2013, the Knicks traded away Marcus Camby again, Steve Novak and Quinton Richardson, a 2016 first round pick and 2014 and 2017 second round pick for Andrea Bargnani. Steve Novak was used as a solid piece for the Raptors 
while Cam and Richardson never played a game for the Raptors after the trade. The first round pick later turned into Jakob Pertl, who was used in the Kawhi Leonard trade during the summer of 2018. Meanwhile, the second round picks became Xavier Thames, who was useless, and Jonah Bolden, who is currently on the Philadelphia 76ers. Andrea Bargnani had his worst season yet with the Knicks and failed to perform as he was expected to. This later led to the, the buffoon named James Dolan to pull off trade discussions for Kyle Lowry, believing that he was going to get finessed by Masai Ujiri. But later did he know that he finessed himself by not pulling the trigger for Kyle Lowry. Well, sucks for him, I guess. Before Andre hits the court, he must be ready for anything. Exercise and drills help Andrea stay game ready, but to be fully prepared, Andrea needs to eat right. With Primo Pasta and Sauce as part of a balanced diet and healthy lifestyle, Andrea can compete game in, game out. Primo Pasta and Sauce. Quick and nutritious, simply delicious. Everyone knows it's Primo. 2004, the Knicks traded away Howard Isley, Charlie Ward, Antonio McDice, Macias Lampe, a 2004 first rounder which became Kirk Snyder, and a 2010 first rounder that later turned out to be a future all star named Gordon Hayward. At first, it was all amazing until Marbury clashed with many people from management, and it was also on multiple different occasions. Not only did he fight with management, his contract was really bad. The Suns signed Marbury to a four-year $74 million contract in 2003 before the Knicks traded for him, meaning that he would get $18 million a year, which is really expensive in 2003. The Knicks banned Marbury from attending any Knicks games and practices, and the ban is still up to this day. This isn't the first time this shit happened, as in 2017, Charles Oakley was banned from the Garden. Seems like a Knicks tradition. This is the only time this happened under James Dolan where people were banned. They had a problem with Dolan because they didn't like the way Dolan ran the Knicks. October 2005, the Knicks traded away a 2006 first rounder which became a future seven-time All-Star named LaMarcus Aldridge. I think you guys may have heard him before. A 2007 second round pick that became Kirilo Fisenko and a 2009 second round pick that became John Brockman. We already mentioned Eddie Curry before. But, you know, the Knicks, classic Knicks, they just let a future all-star slip out of their fingers. In the 2011 trade deadline, the Knicks received Carmelo Anthony and the old aging Chauncey Billups. For Raymond Felton, Danilo Gallinari, Wilson Chandler, Timothy Mozgov, a 2014 first-round pick, and a 2016 first-round pick. The 2014 pick later became Doug McDermott, which the Nuggets traded away for Yusuf Nurkic and Gary Harris. Good trade for the Nuggets, bad trade for the Bulls. And then the 2016 first-rounder became Jamal Murray. Carmelo was becoming a free agent that offseason, and the Knicks clearly wanted him, and he clearly wanted to go to the Knicks. But James Dolan was an impatient fuck. Same thing with Carmelo Anthony, and the Nuggets got their future from Carmelo Anthony, being a stubborn brat and not staying in Denver. Sure stayed in Denver. The Knicks fucked you up. This was the second episode of How to Run an NBA Organization. We chose the New York Knicks this time and it was really fun of making fun of them and the same thing with James Dolan. If you have any other team in mind, please suggest them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good day.